Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number 13. This week I'm going to be talking about how to measure the shutter lag of your camera with the camera axe. Back in episode number two I talked a lot about shutter lag and you might want to go check that out if you haven't seen episode number two because it's a lot of really good background information. I'll put a link to that in the show notes. But people have been asking me to show them how to measure shutter lag with the camera axe. Um, so I thought I'd do an episode about that. So here's the general setup I'm using to measure shutter lag of my camera with the camera axe. Right here I have the camera axe and this is the camera axe 5 shield. It's a new version I'll be releasing in a couple of weeks. But the version really doesn't matter for this use. Uh, version 4 will work just fine. So to camera flash port number 1 I'm connecting the flash and I have the flash set to manual um, power level um, of 1 64th and I just have it set to that so that I know the flash is going to um, have a really short duration. To um, camera flash port number 2 I have the Canon 30D connected and you can see that the camera and the flash are sort of pointed right at each other and the reason for that is I wanted to make sure that if the flash goes off the scene is going to be white and if the flash is not going off I want it to be you know pretty dark or black and you could do it in a dark room but I found that you know if you have them sort of connected this way this is blocking most of the light out of the lens anyways so I was able to get uh, half a second exposure and you want a pretty long exposure for this um, because you want to make sure that you know if the, sh the shutter's open for a long time and you're trying to find out when the shutter's just opened so that you can have the flash go off at that moment. So try to have a half a second exposure. I have the f-stop closed as small as it'll go and I have the ISO set to 100 which is the lowest this camera will go. So basically I'm trying to keep the scene black in the room and you know if if you're having problems with uh, it having too much light in this kind of a setup you could you know put something over it to, to block the rest of the light but when I um, take a picture you can see that it's it's black so that's that's good setup one thing I forgot to mention about the setup I have a sensor cable plugged into sensor port number one I'm using the gate sensor but the the sensor really doesn't matter too much uh, as long as you can trigger the camera axe on the on command it'll work just fine. The microphone sensor would be fine. Anyways, I now I'm going to show how to set up the software um, on this advanced sensor menu. Uh, I think it's called the general sensor menu on version 4. Uh, so camera flash uh, number 1 is device here and we want to trigger that with sensor number 1 so that's good and device number 2 is the camera we also want to trigger that with um, sensor number one. So that looks good. The delay. Um, well, we want the camera to be triggered immediately. So we're going to have that at zero. And the delay for the flash, we're going to increment until we find how long it takes the shutter to open. So I guess I'll set that to 50 milliseconds to start. That's going to be too short. I, I expect it to be black at that point. Uh, I expect the picture to be black, but uh, it's a good starting point. So the bulb times, those defaults are fine. Uh, we do want to pre-focus um, the camera uh, just so that we can minimize the delay uh, from focusing of the camera and stuff. Back in episode number two I pointed out that you know that has a pretty big impact on, on shutter lag. And for the trigger type. So with the gate sensor um, by default it has a high value and when I um, close it the value drops down to low so I'm going to change the triggering on high 
to be a trigger low and the value of 800 is fine and that should do it so now that everything's set up I'm just gonna hit activate to activate the camera X and then I'll trigger the gate sensor and I have to hit activate again to exit the mode in order for the image to get displayed on the back of the camera and the reason for that is with the pre-focus mode that's equivalent to holding your shutter button halfway down and many cameras just don't display the image on the back of the camera in that case so I keep exiting the active mode between tries so that one was black so what I'm going to do is I'll uh, increase these delays by 10 milliseconds so now we're at 60 milliseconds and that's also black so I'll go to 70 milliseconds and that looks white so maybe between 60 and 70 milliseconds I'll try 65 That's black. 66. That's black. Sixty seven. It's black. Whoops. Oh, that one's interesting because half black and half white tells me that the shutter's most or part way open. So 68 means that the shutter's starting to open, but it's not all the way open yet. So we're going to increase this to 69 and see what happens. Oh, we got another one where the shutter's part of the way open so let's go back to 70 and see what happens remember 70 was all the way open before so um, I'm expecting it to you know probably work and that looks all the way open so what I'd probably use for this camera is a shutter delay of maybe 71 milliseconds um, just to you know make sure that the shutters all the way open before I um, trigger the flash. That's how I'd measure shutter lag with the camera axe. Thanks for watching.